Earth surface consists of a variety of landforms such as valleys, plains, and mountains which are constantly changing due to exogenic process. What is exogenic process? Good day everyone! Welcome to my learning channel, Surfax Learning Channel. Today, the learners are expected to describe how rocks undergo weathering, identify the agents of erosion, explain how the products of weathering are carried away by erosion and deposited elsewhere. What is exogenic process? A exogenic process is a geologic process that occurs on the surface of the earth such as weathering, erosion, mass wasting, and sedimentation. How rocks undergo weathering? What is weathering? Weathering is the process of wearing away or break down of rocks by agents present in the atmosphere like temperature changes, moisture, frost, etc. Weathering is a static process which means rocks break down up where they stand and, they, and the broken pieces remains at the same location. Weathering breaks huge rocks into small rocks and it breaks small rocks into soil and sand and sediments. What causes weathering? Weathering is caused by ice, wind, plants, heating and cooling. All of these factors or agents which place a big part in breaking rocks into two pieces. There are three types of weathering. The first is mechanical weathering. What is mechanical weathering? Mechanical weathering is a physical process when rock gets broken into smaller pieces, retaining the characteristics of the original rock. This happens when temperature changes, which tends the rock to break. During daytime, rocks get heated, causing it to expand. But when the temperature cools down, rocks contract. The expansion and contraction causes the rock to crack and eventually breaks down. Frost is a mechanical weathering happens in the cooler regions when water fill up the cracks of the rocks and turns to ice tends the rock to expand and split the rock during the day the ice melts and water seeps farther into cracks and freezes creating larger cracks day by day into years by years. Another type of weathering is chemical weathering. It refers to the disintegration of rocks caused by chemical reaction. Water is the main agent of chemical weathering. Through it, it is inactive in its pure form. Even small amounts of dissolved substance can make it very active. For example, when rain gets dissolved with industrial gases such as nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide, 
causing acid drain which leads to the widespread damage to soil and plants and building roofs. Iron compounds present in rocks combined with water forms iron hydroxide which results in breaking of rocks. And the last type of weathering is biological weathering. When roots grow into the cracks in the rocks to search food or nourishment causing the rock to break down due to the immense pressure of the roots. Another cause of biological weathering is burrowing animals which contributes actively to the process of weathering by loosen or loosening the materials and exposing the rocks to the other agents of weathering such as temperature. The main effect of weathering is the development of layer of loose materials on the surface of the earth which is the basis for the process of soil formation. Developed soil is formed only when the weathered particles of rocks remains undisturbed in one place for a longer period of time. Now, what are the agents of erosion and how these products of weathering are carried away? Erosion is transportation of sediments that have been broken down by weathering. Some of these agents of erosion is the gravity. In the, in, in the in, uh, slope plains and areas, landforms and rock materials are carried away by the gravity towards the plain surfaces. Things falling downhill. And that's what we're looking at today. Um, and so we have a name for whenever gravity pulls sediment downhill. It's called a mass movement. Um, and that's because it is essentially the movement of mass. So the movement of rock and soil and mud and vegetation, etc. And so you can see some examples of mass movements in nature here. And uh, there are some subtle differences between the different types, and we're going to look at those today. All right. So uh, we are actually going to look at four types. All right, and here are those four types. Let's go through each one, starting with uh, the slowest one, which is called soil creep. So as we see in the diagram, soil creep is this gradual downhill movement of soil. So we're not really talking about big chunks of rock here. We're not necessarily talking about mud. We're talking about soil. And we're also talking about a very slow process. So this isn't some violent um, falling down that happens rapidly. This may happen over weeks, months, years, decades, or even longer. Okay, so that's soil creep. Second up is something we call debris flow. Sometimes this is called a landslide. And so this is much more rapid. So it's when a collection of debris, and we use the term debris because it can really include anything from all sizes of rock, soil, mud, vegetation, um, anything. When that debris falls rapidly downhill, we call it a debris flow or a landslide. Third, we have a mud flow, or sometimes it's called a mudslide. And so again, this is the downward flow of fine particles, so very small particles, which is what we refer to often as mud, and water. So these mudslides or mud flows are often associated with big storms with a lot of rain and precipitation that makes the soil on a slope unstable until it eventually gives way and starts sliding downhill. They can be very dangerous, as you can imagine. Finally, we have a rock fall or often called a rock slide. And this is pretty self-explanatory. This is rapid dropping or falling of pieces of rock, usually off of a cliff or a very steep slope. All right, and so we're going to go through each of these and look at some real-world examples so you can kind of visualize what these processes look like in nature. And we will begin with a mudslide or a mud flow. 
So again, this often um, follows large precipitation events, so lots of rain when the soil becomes this thick, gooey, viscous mud that gravity can then cause to slide downhill. Uh, it can be very dangerous. These mudslides can engulf entire villages or communities, um, basically swallowing up anything in their path. Uh, here you can see a short video clip of an actual mudslide happening. Um, you can see it's fairly quick, not quite as quick necessarily as a rock slide or a landslide, but fairly quick and fairly dangerous. Um, so then we can look at a rock slide or a rock fall. Um, and again, this is exactly what you would expect it to be. Usually very steep slopes or cliffs and big chunks of rock bouncing their way downhill. Obviously very violent, just destroying anything in its path. Um, again, here you can see a little video clip of a, a rock slide in progress. Um, obviously taken from very far away for safety, but um, you can start to get a, a sense of just how powerful this is as those chunks of rock just barrel their way down the hill. Oftentimes, we'll take some preemptive actions to try and um, keep highways and, and populated areas safe, and that can be done by knocking loose rocks off on purpose so that it's in a controlled environment. Um, what's neat about this is you can really get a sense of just how powerful and, and scary this process actually is. So here we have a helicopter using a wrecking ball. Um, so pretty, pretty scary stuff. Um, Next, we have a landslide or debris flow. And again, this is a mixture of materials falling fairly rapidly. So it might be sand or silt. It might be boulders. Um, it might be vegetation. Pretty much anything falling all together. Um, and you get some, some pretty powerful examples here. This video made its way around the internet a few years back, and it's a pretty jarring example of a landslide. You're going to see the entire slope give way here, and everything goes with it. The fence, the telephone poles, entire trees. Um, so very, very scary stuff. Um, Finally, last one is soil creep. And again, this is probably the most tame out of all of them. This is very slow, gradual movement of, of soil primarily and then vegetation on top downhill over a longer period of time. So this is not something you would stand there and observe. It's something that would take place over, in many cases, years and years. Um, you can often tell when it's happened by looking at things like telephone poles or fences and seeing how they're not lined up like they originally were because the soil that they are anchored in has actually moved. So you can see that here as well. So those are our four examples of mass movements. Now there's one more key thing you want to know and that is that um, because most, not all of these, are rapid and often violent, the sediments that are deposited tend to be angular and unsorted. So let's just break down those two words. So angular refers to the shape of the sediments. So all the little chunks that we see at the bottom of a slope, for example, are going to tend to be sharp and jagged and irregular. They're not smooth and rounded out like we might see in a river, for example. And that's because of how they were eroded and deposited. They bounced violently down the side of a hill giving them these sharp kind of jagged edges. Um, and then the second word there is unsorted. And so that just means mixed up. So we're going to have everything from big giant boulders down to cobbles and pebbles and sand and silt and clay. So all different size sediments from giant to tiny mixed together. Um, there's no mechanism to sort them out, um, which is something we do see when sediment is deposited in water. Um, because in water, the larger chunks will settle faster and the smaller chunks will settle slower. So we do see what we call sorting. Uh, in gravity examples like we've been looking at, we don't get that. Everything is just basically dumped all at once and so it's all mixed up. Okay, so just to sum up a couple key ideas here. So the erosion of sediment caused by gravity we call a mass movement. Um, and we went through some different types, and these include soil creep, debris flow, rock slide, and mudslide. And then we need to know that these are going to deposit angular and unsorted sediment. And so that's our look at erosion and deposition caused by gravity. Be sure to check back for our next videos in which we'll take a look at glaciers and rivers and wind and all the different types of erosion and deposition that takes place. Thanks for watching.
kunting kaalaman mula kay Sir Pax. Sana po nakatulong po ito sa ating mga distance learners. At kung bago ka sa channel na ito, huwag mong kalimutang i-click ang subscription button at ang notification bell all para updated ka sa mga susunod ko pong learning videos. Happy learning!